What is up, my camera crew? We're back here again doing another tutorial in DaVinci Resolve 17. And today we're going to be going over how to use LUTs, when it's appropriate to use LUTs, and maybe why you should be using LUTs. And if you guys stay to the end of the video, I'm going to be showing you two of my tricks when using LUTs, how you're going to get the best results and how you can shot match with them so much easier. So make sure you stay to the end of the video. You do not want to miss out on those two secrets. But really quick, my name is Sam Aldrich, aka Sam the Cameraman. If y'all aren't a part of the camera crew, hit that subscribe button. Become a part of the camera crew. Come August, if we hit 10,000 subscribers, we're doing a camera body giveaway. So do not miss out on that. Let's get into DaVinci. Let's go over LUTs and everything you need to know about them. All right, let's get at it. All right, so now that we're in DaVinci Resolve, you can see that I have uploaded a whole bunch of footage here. So I have a variety of different footage. These first two clips I have used in my previous tutorial. So if y'all haven't checked it out, I'll link it up here somewhere. Make sure you check it out. Anyways, uh, this footage is what I would assume Rec 709. And then this footage right here is on from a music video that I shot. And this is uh, from Red. Um, it's like a Red Log uh, 3, 3G10. This was shot on the Komodo. These are two separate music videos. We're going to go over some footage from Red. And then this, of course, is stuff that I shot when I was touring with Jimmy Allen. And this would be uh, shot in, I think, Cine 4 and 8-bit uh, Sony footage. So we're going to have a variety of footage to use today to show you that these LUTs actually work. So and how they work with different kinds of footage. All right. So the first thing you want to do now is come into the color tab and I am going to be using my LUTs. I have created these LUTs. I'm actually working on a whole bunch of packs for y'all. They'll be dropping very, very soon. And we have our first clip. We'll bring our clips up so we can see what is going on around here. And we have all of our LUTs. I have a variety of them. We got more coming yet. So anyways, let's work with, let's start with the red footage. We're going to start with this shot right here. First thing, you know, normally what people are going to do is you got your first note up here on the right. You're going to just add in, let's add in like Roxanne three. You can double click it or you can drag it on and almost like right out the gate. This looks pretty darn good. Using LUTs is like a starting point. You never want to just use a LUT and then that's it. There is moments when it is going to work, but you know, just the same as in Lightroom and Photoshop and everything else, like they're a good base and then you build upon your LUT. You want to make another node, so that's just going to be Alt S. And with that, you can add in a little contrast, add, you know, take your lift down, brighten it up a little bit, and we can add just a little bit of more saturation. And you know, this whole clip already here looks fan freaking tastic. I mean, let's go look before, after, and that's just one node and your LUT. And if we open our clips back up, we can come to this shot, which is, and if you hit your middle mouse button, it translates beautifully. And like, again, that's just two nodes. You come here, disable them, that's your LUT, and here's a little bit of an adjustment. And right there, let's try it on some different ones. Now, this is a little bit of a different scene. So this would be a good example of when these, you know, for shot matching. We're going to do the same thing, middle mouse button. And we can see this is a little bit dark. So if we come here, we can reset everything. And let's just brighten it up. And let's darken it down and add a little saturation. And just like that, that looks great. If we wanted to, we could like cool it down maybe a little bit. These are fantastic for just building looks, like in coming up with really quick looks. Like if we reset this and we can come to Roxanne 2, that's a cooler look. Let's actually, let's just reset everything. And let's go to Romance. Let's go Romance 1. This is a real drastic look, a very almost uh, like rosy, a lot of magenta in here. So let's put that on here. And now let's just lift it up a little bit and let's bring it down and brighten it up, add a little saturation. And just like that, that shot looks fantastic. And we can translate this again to these shots by just hitting that middle mouse button. And we might need to lift up the shadows. And again, we can just do that by lifting them up. And just like that, that shot, oh, that sunset just pops. So let's play with, I mean, obviously we played with some red. Let's play with an, like, an interior shot. Let's put uh, Romance 2 on here. I like that. And then if we go Alt S, we can add in a little more saturation. And just like that, that shot already looks fan-freaking-tastic, as always. I mean, just a cool way 
to add in a quick look and it's easy to match these shots from shot to shot to shot because it doesn't require having like a 12 node node tree where you have to go and fine tune everything. You can just come here, click it. I mean, already like that shot just looks fantastic. Now, I know you're probably asking yourself, Sam, what if uh, the LUT is too powerful? So let's say the LUT is too powerful. Let's see here. I got, I got one that is extremely powerful. Let's reset all of this. Let's go to warm and cozy. I believe it's four. Let's see how powerful this one is. This is a very harsh look and I created it um, specifically with that in mind. Like I wanted a very like warm, um, muted blacks uh, look. And, and if it's too strong, one thing you can do is make sure you're on your LUT node and then hit your keying option right here in your toolbar tab and come to key output and just drag it down. And the more you drag it down, you could turn it completely off. But if you come like, let's say, let's go like, 60%. And now if we go in and add a little contrast, add a little brightness, add some saturation, it's not as powerful. And this can work with any single LUT you ever use. It doesn't need to be these LUTs. Any LUT that you ever use, if it's too strong, all you got to do is make sure you're on your LUT um, node and you come down to your keying option and you can completely change anything that you want with it. Let's go over to one of these Rec 709 footage or clips right here. So here we go. We got a Rec 709 clip, and to show you that these LUTs work with Rec 709 and how you use LUTs with Rec 709. All right, let's say we take this Roxanne to drag and drop it on here, and everything looks pretty just clip, gross, yuck. Ugh, yeah, yeah, we don't like this shot. And this is where I'm going to give you my first tip when using LUTs. This is crucial when it comes to using LUTs in DaVinci Resolve. We wanna create a bunch of nodes, and let's say we're gonna have a three node node tree. We're gonna put our LUT on node number three. So let's grab like Roxanne one, and we're gonna put it on node number three. And right now, this image does not look good. Well, what we can do is we come over to node one, and we can drop our gain. It's gonna darken it. We're gonna drop our midtones here, and drop our shadows, well, Let's not drop the shadows too, or the lift. And we come over to node two, and we're gonna take our saturation, and we're gonna reduce it just a little bit. And we can even bring down the midtones a little bit more, and we can brighten up the highlights. And just like that, it cleaned that image up that simple. And that is the key. That is one super, super powerful trick when working with LUTs is you want to have your LUT be or come after all of your adjustments. If you make all of your adjustments after your LUT, that look is already baked into the image. And if you try to brighten it or darken it, you're, are, you're making adjustments that the LUT's already made. Now, if you put all of your adjustments before the LUT, now you're getting all of the data of that clip um, at your disposal. You're not like having anything baked into it. So, and we come over here to the same thing. If we just middle mouse bit button click, I mean, look at this. I mean, that looks so much better than like, let's just turn these off. Let's see what these look like. Turn that off. I mean, just with that one LUT on here, cause it's a Rec 709 image, it does not look all that good turn this LUT back on, or you turn these back on, boom, already. I mean, we can make some adjustments. I would probably brighten this up just a little bit. Maybe let the mid-tones up, just like that, and maybe add a little bit more saturation, not a lot. And just like that, our image is looking so much better. All right, so now that we've worked with Rec. 709 footage, let's go with the infamous Sony 8-bit footage. 8-bit footage is never fun to work with, but I'm gonna show you guys how uh, easy it is with these LUTs that it, you can use them. So let's go with Romance 4. We're gonna bring that in, drag and drop it onto our third node because we wanna do our adjustments before the node. And if we scroll through to like a hero clip right here and we adjust our exposure, we wanna lift it up just a little bit and bring down the highlights and maybe lift up the gamma, bring up our gain, we'll adjust our gain like that come to our second node, add a little saturation, not a whole lot. And already, just like this, if we turn that off, turn it on, we have a beautiful looking image on Sony 8-bit Cine 4 footage. We're gonna come over here, let's grab this shot right here. 
shot that I got of Kane Brown, Granger Smith, and Jimmy Allen. We're going to do the same thing. Add a few of these nodes. Let's do this warm and cozy one. This is kind of like a jokery look. So you put that there. We're going to grab our first node, darken it up, open up the uh, gamma, bring down the gain, open up the gamma, bring down the gain. Maybe bring up the gain just a little bit. And come to our saturation, pump it up just a little bit and let's drop and look at that already this has like such a unique look if you go before and after the look of this is just absolutely unique and there's just you can just build upon these looks in so many really cool ways so but i mean it's just you can take this footage in, in right click or middle click and look at that it just translates so well to other clips when you can find a look that works and you can build one look and slap it onto another I mean, come on, it works fantastic. Let's go to like an indoor shot. This is a shot from a music video that we've just recently did. And we're gonna go Alt S a whole bunch. And let's do maybe warm and cozy too. And we can see that the blacks are, are clipping hard. And uh, we need to, the, the colors look great, but we need to like add in a little bit of uh, life into those, uh, the shadows. So we're gonna just lift, come to our node one, lift up them shadows and just like that this clip we're just adjusting it you know bring down the gain bring up the gamma and come here to our second node add a little bit of life back into it with some saturation and just like that that clip just came to life i mean come on how great is that look at that boom boom before after next level what's i'm telling you guys all right now here is my secret sauce this is my go-to and some people might already know this however this is worth the wait i promise y'all if you reset this clip let's let's go to like one of these rec 709 shots because this is where you're going to see it the most and i'm going to show you guys how you can make all of these clips the same color space that's right the same color space all right so what you want to do is create five nodes and we're going to bring them over here come down here bring that all right, I want to be working in like a red log color space. I already know that I have a bunch of these clips down here that are in red log and the rest um, aren't matching that. So we can cr actually take this Rec. 709 footage and put it into a red color space, which is absolutely incredible. The power of DaVinci Resolve is unreal. So come to effects and type in color space transform and you're going to drop that in your node number four. Or I noticed that I get always the best effect when I put it into my like second to last node. So what we want to do is make sure our effects is open. Click on our uh, color space transform. Come down to input color space we know is rec 709. Input gamma we know is rec 709. In our output color space we want to be red. So we're going to scroll down where it says red wide gamut RGB. And look at that. That already changed this made it very flat. And now we're going to go to output gamma and we're going to go to red log film and look what it did to this image. It almost matches like look at the look at how close these look. So now if we put our LUT on this node on our node five, it's going to almost let's do let's do traveler. That looks really cool. So just like this, you put it there and now it's the same principle. All of these adjustments are happening before the color space transform and they're happening before the LUT. Now I will say make sure your LUT comes after your color space transform. Otherwise, when you put your LUT before it, it's transforming that LUT into that color space. So we want to make sure that LUT comes after your color space transform. Now if we just come over here, we can adjust this clip however it is we want it to look. So we can control all of the like the you control your exposure get it to where you want and now come to your second note and just play with the saturation get it to where you want to get it i mean if you go control f i mean this is an incredible looking image and this is rec 709 and now the great thing is if you hold, get out of this is because we converted this to a red log workflow we can come to this image and just hit the middle button and do the same thing and it's going to be uh, converted to a red workflow as well. It's going to be created to a red color space. If we deselect these two nodes and just deselect the 
the LUT node right there. That's what the color space transform has done. I mean, we'll just turn it all off and turn that back on. I mean, look what it's done. It's absolutely incredible what the power of that color space transform can do. And just really quick to go over it one more time, let's do it to this Sony footage right here. We'll just click on that and we will reset all of this stuff except for the color space. Well, let's reset everything. So with this, we're gonna open up our effects again, color space transform, put it on number four. We're gonna turn that off, click on it. We actually want that effects back on. This input color space on the Sony now needs to change. It's not Rec. 709. This was shot in S, I think S gamma three, and it's going to be input gamma is they don't okay so they don't have a Cine four input gamut, but it will just say S log. That's pretty close to what we need. So now we want to output our color space back into red wide gamut and back into red log film. And just like that, it opens it back up. And you can do experiment with all these different color spaces. So we'll actually do red log 3G10 because it brings down those highlights a little bit more. So now we can turn that off. We'll throw a LUT on here. Let's throw Roxanne 3 because I like the warmth of it. And now we just come back down here to our lift gamma on gain. And we just kind of play this dance again like we were earlier. Just get it dialed into where we think looks good. You know, bring your gain down, bring your gamma up. And then we can come over to the node 3, add in a little saturation. And just like that, boom. Beautiful. It's absolutely incredible what this can do. So that is how to use LUTs in a nutshell. I know it was a little long and drawn out. However, like I said, those last two little tricks I showed you using the color space transform and doing all of your um, balancing work and, and uh, exposure work before the LUT is going to be game changing. I know that not everybody has time to go in and create looks for their projects if you're doing vlogs or you're doing client work and you need to be fast. So that's when like using LUTs comes into play and I think that's when LUTs like are the most important to be used is when you're trying to have a really cool look and be mo as efficient as you can be with your time so let me know what you guys think of this tutorial in the comments I hope that y'all uh, liked it and let me know if uh, you're interested in these LUTs because if y'all are I'll drop them even sooner I'm looking to drop them in the next couple weeks but uh, maybe I can drop them this week if y'all want to see them drop this week let me know in the comments uh, you know it, we can make it happen. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, thank y'all for watching. Like I said, subscribe. We're hitting 10,000 subscribers by August. Going to be doing a camera body giveaway. So just don't make sure, make sure you don't miss out on that. Hit that bell notification. I love each and every one of y'all and I'm going to catch you in the next one.